All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and as part of the EWD 1111 class taught in fall 2020 at Rankin, I've been doing a series of video presentations based on the textbook we're using for the class, that book being Get Programming with Node.js by Jonathan Wexler, and it's a Manning publication. I have gone through so far Unit 0, which had lessons or chapters 0, 1, and 2, and I'm up to then Unit 1. Getting started with Node.js says now that we've gone through Unit 0 and have Node.js installed and running, it's time to see it working. So this unit, as you can see right there, is about building from the start. We start by building a very, very small web application using Node.js and eventually we add components to it. All right, in fact, when we get to Chapter 7, which is at the end of Unit 1, we'll be starting to build our full-fledged confetti cuisine or whatever it's called application. So in Lesson 3, as it says, we're introduced to the Node Package Manager and we talk about how to configure a new Node.js application. In Lesson 4, as it says, it introduces the idea of a web server running on Node.js as a way to launch a simple website. Lesson 5 says we'll get enough information to load web content based on different requests. So we'll start talking about routing in that chapter. And finally, in chapter 6 and 7, 6 teaches you how to serve different HTML files from the web server rather than just one simple response because really up till that point most of the stuff that we will have been doing is when you put in an address you either get an error message back or a single line so we're going to start adding more to it than that all right finally in chapter seven as it says it'll show us how to put everything together by building a complete multi-page application which we will create from scratch as you can see it will have three views in it routes for the views and assets, and a public client folder. Then in the next unit, Unit 2, we'll go to the next step using a framework to make the app go even faster. And when we do that, we're going to start getting into talking about Express.js. All right, so let's get into it. Chapter 3, starting on page 31, creating a Node.js module. In this lesson, as it says, you kick off a Node application by creating a module. And notice, Node.js is a JavaScript file. Then, we'll introduce the Node Package Manager to the workflow and talk about some of the commonly used NPM commands and tools used for setting up an application. Now, I'm going to look on here. I'm going to do a control D and a clear. So I'm, whoops, and a clear. So I'm starting out brand new. All right. So this lesson has three different, as you can see, objectives creating a Node.js module, constructing a Node.js application with Node Package Manager, and installing a Node.js package using the Node Package Manager. Okay. So this is kind of the premise for what we're going to want to be doing in this book. This is what the author has us building throughout this book. It's an application. I think it's called Confetti Cuisine. It's designed to help people share food recipes and learn from one another. As it says, by using the application, you can subscribe you can join online courses to practice cooking and you can connect with other users we want to use node.js to build this web application which would make sense that's what the book's about and we want to start by verifying user zip codes to determine the locations and demographics of the audience so if somebody puts in 63385 we know that they're coming from Wentzville Missouri as an example says, will you need to build a tool to do that? The answer is no. 
we're able to go in and use the node package manager to install one of the node.js packages. A package is defined here as being a library of code that other people have written that gives you access to specific features and functionality that you can use on an as needed type of basis. It says in fact a package for verifying locations based on zip code is available. You'll see that later on in this chapter. So you can take a look at the package and how to install it in this lesson. So, and this should make sense, it says a Node.js app is made up of many JavaScript files. Just like a website is made up of different files, well that's what we're getting to in here. But by and large, the files that we've created in the past, we've had maybe several HTML files. Uh, we may have had image files, we may have had several CSS files, including like bootstrap type of file of CSS, our own CSS, etc. All right, we're going to keep doing that. That's not going to change, but we're going to be adding stuff again on the server side. So when you create your application, in order to make the application organized and efficient, we need to be able to access, it says, the files that you put in need to have access to one another's contents when necessary. Each JavaScript file or folder containing a code library is known as a module. So it can be as small as a single file, and it can be a folder that contains multiple files. So they give an example going back from what we talked about much earlier in the textbook, and that is it says, if you remember back in Unit 0, we created a file called messages.js, and we added uh, an array called messages into the file with three strings. The strings, you are great, you can accomplish anything, and success is in your future. All right. It says, keeping these messages separate from the code you'll write to display them makes your code more organized. It does more than that. Yes, it makes your code more organized, but you also... By separating it like that, you may decide you want to use that file in another program. It makes it that much easier to do that. So to manage these messages in another file, we need to change the let that you see right here, that, to use the exports object. So we want to say export dot exports dot messages. All right. As with other JavaScript objects, you're adding a messages property to the node.js exports object, and this property can be shared among modules. All right, sorry, lost my page. There we go. Okay. The exports object is a property of the module object. So saying, you know, like we did right here, uh, what was it? Exports.messages is the same thing as saying modules.exports.messages. We've seen this before where, for example, we learned that all classes basically are based off of directly or indirectly off of object. But we don't say object dot something, we just use the actual thing that's underneath. It. Same kind of an idea. All right. The module is ready to be required or imported by another JavaScript file. You can test this module by creating another file called print messages, the purpose of which is to loop through the messages and log them to your console. All right. So what this is saying here is we're making a constant called message module and we're assuming that on the directory that we're currently in we've got a folder called messages now I think I created that folder earlier I'm going to quickly check it I could redo it it sure isn't going to take any time but there's messages.js so let's just go create a new folder
new folder in whatever we want to call this. Let's just call it what it is. So we'll call it lesson three. And I'm going to grab the messages file that we have right here. And I'm going to drag it down into here and just, for now, I'll just copy it. All right. Then I'm going to start up Node. All right. And the first thing I want to say in here, according to what I saw, was I want to create a constant called message module. All right. And I want to set it equal to require dot, meaning from the same directory I'm in, slash messages. And again, it assumes that it is a, uh, it assumes that it's uh, a, a JavaScript file. All right. Came back undefined, which is good. All right. Now, to test it, we say messages or message module eyes are getting old it's hard to read it out of my book so I'm going to read it off of the copy here message module dot messages for each okay message module dot messages so we are getting from that file dot for each and that is case sensitive m fat arrow console dot log m now, if this works when I hit enter, I should see all three of my messages. For each is undefined. For each. Well, I'm trying to figure out what I did wrong there, but we'll, we'll get it. I thought that looked just like what I just copied it. Let's try doing this. Let's take this. Put it there. And then take node and put it on top of it. easier message module message module dot messages that up and actually hit enter there or what I did there of anything it says undefined so that actually should have been okay let's get out of this and try it again node const message module equals Oh, 
know what the problem is. Anybody else? <laughs> I'm not in the right folder. So, let's get out of this. Probably do it from here, but let's do a CD to, what did we call that? What was this called? This is, is this lesson two? desktop we just made this it was earlier we called it lesson 03 and does that have messages under it it does Lesson 03. Okay, DIR, there it is. All right, let's start up node then. And const message module equals require. Again, current directory. We, we could have done it, we, we did it before, but we would have had to use dot dot there to move up a directory instead of dot. Slash messages all right and now message module dot messages dot for each m fat arrow console dot log m Message module, message module. Well, what did I call the doggone file? I thought it was called messages. Was it called message? It's right there. And I think it is called message. Try this one more time. No, it was called messages. As you can see, we're not, we're in node, but we're getting an error message. So I'm going to stop for a second and see if I can debug this. Actually, I'm 19 minutes in, so what I'm going to do is just stop right here, and we'll continue in the next part.